India has now become the epicenter of the pandemic. It seems like everybody is taking a turn to be the epicenter, right? We had China, Sweden, Italy, the UK, the US, and now India. As of now, the death toll is being reported at 195,000 people with 2,000 people dying a day. Hospitals are overrun and are lacking PPEs, ventilators, and oxygen. And this is coming after India saw a significant decline in COVID cases earlier this year. But that might have been one of the reasons why cases started to spike. The far-right Conservative Party of India, the BJP, was trying to rally for elections, holding mass events, and India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi claimed the pandemic was pretty much over for India. This was obviously not the case. When case numbers started going down, the natural inclination is to act like things are going back to, quote, normal, which was only great for capitalism. With statement like, statements like Modi's, people tend to be more laissez-faire about being safe. Along with that, there is a rise of the double mutant strain that the scientific community is trying to figure out. The concern with this strain is that it's both vaccine-resistant and spreads faster. A lot more research has to be done about these new strains of SARS-CoV-2. Now, third cause of India's crisis is capitalism itself. India is called the pharmacy of the world, and it produces 60% of the world's vaccines, but only has about 1.5% of its population fully vaccinated. India has not been approved to receive Pfizer or Moderna's vaccine, but they have been approved to receive Russia's Sputnik V vaccine, which is just as effective as America's jabs. But America doesn't want India to use a Russian vaccine. I mean, they they fear the side effects that this uh, of this vaccine. You know, side effects that might include things like the destruction of freedom, changing the ending to Rocky IV, and something the CIA calls Putin syndrome. I'm not really sure what it does, but I I think it has something to do with being shirtless and needing to fight bears all the time. Everyone's real unclear about the details or even the reality of this condition, but that just shows you how dangerous this thing really is. Now, vaccination numbers are climbing in the U.S. and the U.K. I mean, most of the global north is doing fine thanks to the working class of the global south. In fact, these vaccines, which were only created because of publicly funded research, are maximizing profits for the pharmaceutical companies that have their logos on them. These companies have made roughly $23 billion and can produce enough vaccines to pretty much take care of everybody in India. Now, India is also charging people for, the, for their vaccinations at private practices, and most low-income low population of India can't afford to pay for these and ends up opting out. They also don't have the necessary resources to find vaccine centers either. Now, it is important to note that these vaccines don't spread the stop of the virus. Rather, they're a stopgap measure to ensure that people don't get the symptoms and flood hospitals. Now, there's research from the University of Chicago that proves CBD has antiviral properties to prevent coronaviruses from replicating inside cells. They actually prevent the virus itself from getting inside the cell. And this means that if we fully legalize cannabis, we can wrap up this pandemic faster than you can say puff, puff, pass. But Joe Biden has no interest in actually ending the a pandemic. Neither does most of the developed world, considering this healing plant is still considered a danger to public health. Proving again that when you politicize science, you effectively kill science. It's like politics assassinates silence, science. In the case of cannabis, that's exactly what's happening. There is no science to show that cannabis is hazardous to health. In fact, science says the opposite. But Big Pharma and its government lackeys have no intention to on curing anything. A few years ago, a Big Pharma executive said that there's no money in curing diseases, but there is money in keeping people just sick enough that they need their product to survive. 
And that's likely the goal with these vaccines. Now, Biden says he wants to send uh, anything necessary to help India, but yet has to, right? He wants to send things like ventilators and oxygen and, and PPEs. I mean, if this crisis is as serious as they claim, why not just send aid right away? Why wait? I mean, only a callous, angry, and hateful person would let brown people halfway around the world die while wasting time on platitudes and hot take tweets. Right now, India is relying on the black market to get its oxygen, which has skyrocketed its prices. It's only fair that the country that produces 60% of the vaccines gets its fair share. But the issue of getting Americans vaccinated, getting American vaccines to India and a lot of other global South countries is the patents for profits. Biden is saying these patents should be waived and he can use an executive action to do so. But that would mean standing up to Big Pharma, who have been buttering his ass for a while now. And, I mean, if he stood up to them, that would mean Big Pharma will stop buttering his ass. And, and do you really want a president with an unbuttered ass? Or worse, a president that has to use I can't believe it's not butter on his ass. I apologize if anyone can't stop picturing a buttered Biden ass right now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for putting that image into your nightmares. Look, if the idea of these vaccines is to reduce stress on a capitalist healthcare system, then wouldn't the logical conclusion be to ensure everyone in the world can get this thing? Or at least make it available so that people can make the decision to get it or not? It would at least reduce the death toll in India. I mean, Biden has the power to alleviate this, but he's refusing to use it. And that's because... He doesn't actually want to use his power for good. He never has. He will make a public he will make public statements to help his image, but that's about as far as he's willing to go. And to make matters worse, the Biden administration is hoarding AstraZeneca's vaccine, a vaccine that's not approved in the United States but is approved in India. So if he gets all of that to India, he can reduce suffering. But like Trump, Biden is all about America first, and the stockpile is a just-in-case measure for Americans. It sounds like Biden wants to Scrooge McDuck the stockpile of vaccines instead of filling his bathtub full of cash or water like you're supposed to in a fucking bathtub. He wants to have a bathtub full of vaccine vials. Biden wants to reenact that famous scene from Flashdance where he pulls a cord and is showered and a vaccine. And it, and this sounds like an exaggeration, but sure, it, it might be. But just remember that 87% of the vaccines have been given to upper class people in the global north. This is vaccine imperialism. The global north is hoarding patents and vaccines from nations that need it to reduce suffering. Plus, right-wing buffoonery and claiming the pandemic was over have all kind of contributed to this cause. And the ones that come out on top are the pharmaceutical companies who are likely to charge for booster shots we're all going to have to get soon. The simple solution is to waive those patents, but the simpler solution is to legalize cannabis globally and ensure the true end of this pandemic. But where is the money in that? And that has been your dispatch for this week. If you guys enjoyed this episode, if you guys enjoyed the content that I have put out there, uh, please do hit the like button. Please do hit the share button. And please make sure that you are subscribed. Uh, if you tend to watch my content on, on YouTube, uh, please do migrate over to Rockfin at rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, most of my stuff is up there for free, but uh, some of the premium content you can unlock for uh, 10 bucks a month. But not only do you get my free content, you get the free content of everybody that's on Rockfin. And that includes uh, folks like Lee Camp, Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Nico House, Misty Winston, uh, Slow News Day, Convo Couch, the list goes on and on and on of, 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 of amazing content creators that are on Rockfin. So I urge you guys to head over to Rockfin, fight, uh, fight censorship that we face on all of those big tech sites, uh, and support uh, content creators and help them earn an income on what they do best, which is create content. 
Obviously, that uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to uh, certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do. And then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members. Uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content. So tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member. But if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the, the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without, uh, without, the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right. I've got uh, T-shirts. I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it. It's there probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, Uh It's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm gonna make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more. Then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay-what-you-want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play, all of, the, all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 